So now we're going to actually calculate the, uh, the center of mass in the x direction um, for this volume of rotation. Um, so as we had already stated, uh, we need to uh, first of all work with delta v is equal to pi r squared times delta x. Um, we're going to use this to create a volume integral um, because once we have that, it will be easy to complete the process. So in order to get a volume integral, I need to define r for this particular case. Um, so the radius of the disk is simply uh, the top of the region there. And so turn off the camera. Um, so that would simply be the square root of x. So r squared will be x. And therefore, delta v is pi times x times delta x. So step one in the process of finding the center of mass would be to get a denominator integral, um, which would simply be the volume. So the volume would be pi times the integral from, it looks like x equals 0 to 4 of x dx. Um, so that would be the volume um, integral. Uh, this one is extremely easy to evaluate, so we could, um, but, but we'll hold off on that. So the second thing we need to do is get the first moment of the volume about the x-axis. So the first moment integral uh, would be given by the volume integral with an extra factor of x. So it would simply be x squared dx. Uh, now we can go ahead and evaluate those two integrals and their ratio um, will end up giving us uh, where the x center of mass is. Um, so uh, the pi's will cancel out when we do the division. So let's simply integrate um, from 0 to 4 x dx. And so if we go ahead and do that, we get x squared over 2. We evaluate it from 0 to 4. Uh, so we have um, 16 over 2 minus 0, or 8 for the um, volume. Well, the volume will actually be 8 pi. Um, then if we look at the first moment integral, it'll just have an x squared with respect to x. So when we go to evaluate that, we'll have x cubed over 3 from 0 to 4. Uh, so that will be 64 thirds uh, minus zero, which is just 64 thirds. Uh, so when we go to figure out what the, so now we're ready for step three. The x position for the center of mass will end up being the numerator integral, which would be uh, pi times 64 thirds. over the volume integral, which is pi over 8. So you can see the pi's will cancel, and we're left with 8 thirds when we do the division, um, which comes out to be 2.67 in decimal form. Um, now, if you recall where the x center of mass was when we were looking at this region as a flat region, um, I believe it was at about 2.4. So now, if we were to put in a line where 2.67 is, it's closer to 3. So it's further to the right-hand side than it had been before. So before it had been somewhere over here when it was a two-dimensional shape. But now that it is a three-dimensional shape, it's a little further to the right. And that's because of what we talked about before. This edge here isn't just sticking up in the y direction. It's also sticking up in the z direction. Um, so we really have a squaring factor for the height of the curve, um, as illustrated that you know, in the r squared value being x, not the square root of x. Uh, so the center of mass is further to the right than it had been um, in the flat examples um, before. Um, now recall the, the center of mass is right on um, the x-axis. So the y value is 0 and the z value is 0. So we now know where the center of mass of this rotated volume is.